Hey everyone, it's Jim Cobb from SurvivalWeekly.com. We're going to do a stumpless stump review of issue number 21 of Recoil Off Grid Magazine. Um, Recoil comes out six times a year. We'll call this the fall issue. I'm not sure when the next one will come out. It says on here that it's to be displayed until October 6th, so we'll just call it the October issue. Um, Off-Grid, full disclosure, I have written for Off-Grid. I will be writing for them again in the future. That in no way impacts my review of this or any issue of their magazine. I've been a fan of Off-Grid since issue number one. I have every issue. It's a great publication. As I said, it comes out six times a year. Um, one thing I really appreciate about Off-Grid is they try to cover a wide range of information, stuff that's applicable for the newbie as well as the the person who's been at this for two, three decades or more. In every issue I always find something that appeals at all levels. We're gonna go through just a handful of the articles in this issue. Uh, we're gonna start with the gear up section which is always right at the beginning of the issue it's their, the new products. It's the new stuff that's out on the market. I, I'm a gear hound just like most preppers and survivalists. I love seeing the gadgets and the gizmos, see what's out there, see what's new and what's innovative, as well as things that you know might have been around for a while and I just somehow missed it. Really great stuff. They try to include things, you know, based on my experience, they try to include things at all budget levels. You know, from the $19 pair of socks to the $2,000 Goal Zero Yeti 1400 Lithium um, at all levels of budget are covered in each issue of the gear up. Um, next up, every issue they do a what if. And this is interesting, they don't, I haven't seen this done in other niche publications. Every issue they'll pick two or three writers and give them a scenario and having written a couple of these I can tell you that the scenarios are very detailed when the the writer receives it it's not just a okay you know for example this one you're stranded in the desert they don't just tell you okay your car broke down it's the middle of the desert it's August what do you do it's very detailed as to who's with you what you have with you and everything and then it's up to the writer to decide, okay, how do we tackle this given the information and the supplies we have? What do we do? And we try to, every step of the way, we're trying to illustrate and highlight different survival lessons. We're trying to teach through the use of fiction. We're writing little stories that contain practical information. A dish served hot by Michael Janish. Now, Mr. Janish, to me, I know him as an extremely accomplished and well-respected instructor in the subjects of self-defense, uh, weapons, things like that. I know he has traveled all over the world. He has done all kinds of really cool stuff. So it doesn't surprise me to see something from him that to me, kind of comes out of left field based on my experience, my knowledge of him. Um, here he's got an article on building a DIY parabolic solar cooker. Solar cooking is an extremely valuable skill during a grid down scenario. Obviously it only works during the day, but it conserves resources. You're not burning fuel you're not consuming anything, you're using the energy of the sun to cook a meal. And here he goes step by step exactly how to build a parabolic solar cooker. He gives you know all the materials you need, the tools, everything, and photos every step of the way, all the way from start to finish. Really great information. Bugging Outbreak by John Schwartz. This is about insect repellent and you know how to deal with bugs. For me, 
Yeah, you know, I, I get concerned about bugs because number one, they spread disease. And number two, I don't like to itch, and mosquitoes make me itch. My part of the world, mosquitoes come large enough that they could qualify as small engine aircraft. So I'm fairly well versed in insect repellents, and I still learned a thing or two in this article. He talks about what you should use and what you shouldn't use, what to look for in an insect repellent, what's going to work, what's not going to work. Really solid, practical, common sense information. Next, we have More Than Mere Existence by Hannah Blodeau. Sorry if I butcher the last name. I am just absolutely horrible with pronouncing names. Um, she is a, survivor, uh, a law enforcement officer as well as a trainer. And this is a, kind of a short article, but really great information. Different, there's five different lessons here on how to get better prepared for emergency situations. Prep your mind, prep your fitness, prep your nutrition, prep your vehicle, prep your gear. And each step of the way she talks about what to do in each of those categories to be better prepared overall. This one is probably my favorite article in this issue. Swiss Army Survival. Five surprising uses for the original multi-tool. For many of us, we have owned countless Swiss Army knives. I couldn't even tell you how many I have at home right now and that doesn't count all the ones I've lost over the years. S Swiss Army knives are really a valuable tool for any prepper and survivalist. They're not prohibitively expensive. You can usually find a model that'll fit in almost any budget. And in this article by Stephen Paul Barlow, he talks about five different uses for a Swiss Army knife, from starting a fire, building a stove, uh, crafting a U-Haul, sawing a dovetail notch, cleaning your weapon. Very practical, very down-to-earth, immediately usable information. This isn't stuff that you're going to read and then hope you remember someday when the chips are down. This is stuff you can do right now today. Last, we're going to talk about Wilderness Wash-Up by Aaron Chase. Hygiene is extremely important. Lack of hygiene will impact your health and it also impacts your morale. In this article, she talks about five different myths about hygiene and she dispels each of them with facts and with common sense. Everything from you're always dirty when you're outdoors, to bad hair days, peeing in the woods. It's just, I mean, it's practical information. It's stuff that you're going to need now as well as when the grid do goes down. This was issue number 21. We're calling it the October issue or the fall issue of Recoil Off-Grid Magazine. I've seen this magazine at Walmart, at Barnes & Noble, at different grocery stores. I've seen it everywhere. It's not exactly hidden. It's expensive, you know, in the grand scheme of things, just like most of the niche magazines. I think cover price is about 10 bucks. You can cut that drastically by subscribing to it, and I'll put a link in the comments for where you can subscribe to Recoil Off-Grid Magazine. I love the publication. I've been a fan of it from day one. I've written for them. I only write for magazines that I believe in. For you know, Take that for whatever it's worth. Again, this is Jim Cobb from SurvivalWeekly.com doing a stumpless stump review of issue number 21 of Recoil Off-Grid Magazine.